World Series is on the air. This is Nathan Field, Detroit, where the Detroit Tigers and the St. Louis Cardinals are battling for the World Championship. The play-by-play descriptions of all the World Series games are brought to you with a compliment of the Ford Motor Company, Mr. Henry Ford, Mr. Edsel Ford, and your local Ford dealers, producers and distributors of Ford and Lincoln cars and Ford trucks. The sponsors will be amply repaid. You get enjoyment from these broadcasts. At this time, during the preceding six games, we've had the pleasure of presenting Graham McNamee, who has, in his own vivid style, pictured the World Series color excitement in the crowd. Unfortunately, Graham had to return to New York last night, and I know he misses being here today. Please listening, we know, here's the beginning of the seventh and deciding game of the 1934 World Series. We miss him, as we know you do. Now for the attending pregame tenseness and excitement of today, we turn you over to Don Wilson of New York. He'll give you the picture here of Tom Manning with the side the first four and a half innings while we have the pleasure during the last half of the game. All right, Don Wilson, come right here and help yourself with this microphone. Thank you, Ford Bond. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hardly need to tell you that uh, there is a capacity crowd gathered here in the stands at Nathan Field in Detroit, Michigan this afternoon to witness the seventh and final game of the 1934 World Series between the Cardinals of St. Louis the Tigers of Detroit. A capacity crowd keyed to the highest pitch for this crucial battle. Not only are the spectators in an almost state of frenzy, but the players themselves are very much on edge, with their nerves being very taut, a condition which might easily be fanned into a flame because of the strain of such an exciting series, as you already know. You will recall that this is the first time since 1931 that the World Series has gone to seven games when the St. Louis Cards fought it out with Connie Mack Athletic. Experts have said that this series will depend largely upon the effectiveness of the pitchers, which is quite an obvious fact in the short series. And that prediction has held through with the great teams, Dizzy and Daffy, Blue Boy Roy, and Tommy Bridges. So far, Daffy Dean is the only pitcher to go through unscathed. Roll, Bridges, Dizzy Dean, each having won one and lost one game, while Daffy has won both his starts. It was right here in Detroit that this whole World Series this year opened, and that first game was conspicuous for two particular reasons. The blowing up of the Tiger infield, which may be accredited to over-anxiety, and uh, the pitching of Dizzy Dean, the Cards winning 8-3 in that first game. Then the second game came along, and it was marked by the outstanding pitching performance of schoolboy Rowe for Detroit. He turned in an all-time standout accomplishment of retiring 22 men in a row. Then the scene of the battle changed down to Sportsman Park in St. Louis. Paul Daffy Dean was in the box for the card. Lacking his usual control, Daffy frequently was trailing the batter who had this youngest of the Dean brothers uh, up three to two. As a result, Paul had the bases populated most every inning during that game, but due to the fine support and teamwork of the entire Cardinal squad and some mighty crafty changes on Daffy's part, the Cards came through to win 4-1. to Then came the fourth game of this series, and the Tigers' balls were sharpened to needle point. Detroit's batting strength, overpowering St. Louis, with Detroit winning to the tune of 10-4. to but this game gave us the finest pitching of this series to date. A most enviable record being turned in by Tommy Bridges of the Detroit Tigers, who pitched the sharpest breaking ball that he has ever had, and who would have had a shutout to his credit, but for one Mr. Delancey, the stalwart card catcher, who pulled a long one out for a homer, scoring the only run for St. Louis, the Tigers winning 3-1. That brings us down to yesterday's game here in Detroit, which was one of those good old-fashioned ball games as we listen to it. Starring honors going to one Leo DeRocha, start shortstop, golf admittedly, rather poor hitter, who knocked the old apple all over the lot, getting three hits out of four times at bat. Bruce Gosselin also gets a hand for his spectacular catch with his back against the fence of Delancey's bid for an extra base hit. Start winning, as you well know, yesterday, 4-3, and what a ball game that was. This brings us down to the task at hand, the pleasant task, this seventh and deciding game for the World Championship. And don't you for one minute think that those men down there won't all be giving everything that they have this afternoon, not only for the honor of winning gold 
flag emblematic of the world baseball champion, but for the $1,800 at stake, which is the difference between $5,700 and $3,900 as the players care for the winners. You know, I've been sitting at home in New York listening to Fort Baum and Tom Manning give us their very splendid reports on these games and listening to Mac, as we so affectionately call Graham McAmey, giving us this pregame color and his very pertinent remarks throughout the game. I've been sitting at home in New York listening to these reports just as you have. And as I was flying through the air by plane between here and New York last night, it occurred to me that I'd like to know just a little bit more about these players whose names have become almost household words during this period. So thinking that perhaps uh, many of you listening in in our radio audience might be interested in the same thing, I dug down into the voluminous biographical files and have here some highly informative data which I think perhaps many of our radio audience will be interested in. Before we give that to you, just a few moments before we took the air, there was a huge small horseshoe taken in here and placed just to the left of the batter's box here at Haven Field for this World Series. It was uh, brought in by Tommy Richardson, Mickey Cochran's great man, and Patsy O'Toole, nationally known as probably the noisiest baseball rooter in America. This huge floral tribute will be presented to Mickey Cochran, manager of the Detroit Tigers. The Cardinal team visits us today. Let's, let's look down and see what happens and some of the facts pertaining to some of their players. We find John Pepper Martin is their third baseman, and incidentally, Pepper, as you probably already are cognizant of, heads the batting race for the St. Louis National. Pepper Martin, the wild horse of the old stage and the outstanding hero of the 1931 World Series. He's the Cardinals' regular third baseman instead of center fielder as he was in the 1931 Series. Martin has improved his play around the hot corner so much that he is considered by many as one of the fastest fielding third basemen in the National League. He's like a cat on front down the third baseline and possesses an arm of steel. There's no doubt about his batting and base running. He ranks among the best ball players in the Heidler circuit. His 1934 record shows that he's bat 289, fielding 942. That's Martin heading the batting list for the card. Then comes right fielder John Rothrock. John Rothrock has been batting around the majors for the past five or six years. Most of the time he spent trying to make good with the Boston Red Sox. An injury to his leg while running the bases hampered his work, and he never until now reached stardom. We met him down at the hotel this morning, and he is a fine specimen of athletic fitness. Rothrock was used in most every position of the Sox, but did not cast a pitch. He was sent to Columbus in the American Association, a farm team with a cardinal chain, and there played such stellar ball that the Cardinal management decided to give him another chance. He played a fine game for the Cards this season and has come through with many a timely blow. Jack is a finished fielder and his throwing arm is one of the very best. He's also very, very fast on the base. He's one of the few Cardinal players who have not started in their chain store and worked himself up into the major league team. This is his first chance in the World Series and he has shown the temperament and ability to do great things. 1934 record, batting 284, fielding 978. Then we come to Frankie Frake, the second baseman and playing manager for the St. Louis Cardinals. Frankie was made manager of the St. Louis Cardinals and said that he would instill the McGraw system of playing ball in the Cardinals' team of things. And so far, he's carried it out to the letter. Frankie you know, was a member of the Giants for eight years, and in that time, he absorbed all of McGraw's methods. He has his teammates on the call to insist that they take an extra base every time there's a possibility of making it. Mike is a great believer in the hit-and-run play, which made McGraw one of the most feared managers in baseball. The bottom flight may not be as colorful as the old Zion manager was, but he's very, very close to it. Frank is one of the greatest money players ever to take part in the World Series. His ability for making seemingly impossible plays and uh, playing bang-up ball when the going is the toughest seems to be one of Frankie's main points. Not suffered in all his around play since he took over the managership of the St. Louis team. His 1934 record, batting 306, fielding 971. Then we have at left field, Joel Ducky Wucky Medwick. Ducky Wucky Medwick, the slugging young Hungarian of the Cardinals, is one of the hardest hitters in the National League. 
He gave promise after his first season in the majors in 1933 of being a coming star, and he remained among the first five batters most of the season, but his club dropped him from that select circle. Ludwig is one of the leading extra base hitters of the National League and one of its leading run scorers and batter in of run. He has a great throwing arm and covers a lot of territory in that old left field garden out there. Hedricks has never failed to hit below the 300 mark in all the six years that he's been playing in the minor and major league baseball. He makes his home in New Jersey and first began playing center pro ball around that section. The Cardinals picked him up and uh, played with them with their farm in 1930. Let's listen to the Star Spangled Banner. Greenberg takes a few steps over toward the pitcher, yelling words of encouragement. 
Walker taking his time, and now the windup. All three. The strike ball. A pointing back ball. And right down the alley, belt high. Harry Gargle behind the back. Here's the first. Owens is second. And Trump umpiring the third. The fifth, three and one. The strike ball. Three and two. Yes, sir, the fans are really pepped up the draft room. Another capacity crowd here. The sun is shining brightly. There's a wind blowing in from right field this afternoon. Three and two is the count. And here it is. Three and nothing on the first hitter, Pepper Martin. He then stuck three of them right down the alley, and finally with a count three and two, Pepper Martin swung and missed. One gone, nobody on. Flat rock up. The fifth. It's a strike. Foul. Elder Walker had plenty on that one. Here's the wind up again. It's a drive in the center field, a base hit. Light is going over the foul. It's hit into. That's going to be a rock rock. The ground is first. The throw. Rock rock is second. It's a double. Jack Rock Rock nailed that ball. A sporting line drive. Into left center field with Jojo White going back fast. He knocked the ball down. And before he could pick it up and get it back to the infield, Rock Rock was on second base. A two bagger for Rock Rock and manager Frankie Frick is coming up. Umpire Harry Geisel delayed proceedings for a moment to brush off the dish. Harry Geisel and all the players are all very much satisfied with the ball and strike decisions of all of these umpires. Here we go now, ready to go on quick. One goal, one runner on second. Ball one, a hook ball is high and outside. It's the first inning, left rock on second. The pitch. The highest fly ball out of the short center field. Rogel going back, White coming in. Rogel has it. Two out. Last block on second. Frankie Fritz swung at that ball. It was a high pitch inside, hitting the ball on the handle of his back. And Jojo White, Billy Rogel were off with the crack of the bat. Rogel turning around and making a neat catch for out number two. Joe Medwick. Joey Medwick, the Cardinal left fielder is up. A right-hand hitter. There's the strip. And now the pitch. It's a ball. A pass ball is inside. Medwick pulls away from the plate. First inning and all. Cardinals batting two out. Jack Walfrock on second. The result of a double. Ball one on Joey Medwick, the hitter. The pitch. The high infield fly ball. Going back to third base with Owen going back fast. He has it. for the St. Louis Cardinals in the first inning. No run, one hit, and no error. Ford Bond. These World Series broadcasts are brought to you through the courtesy of the makers of the Ford V8. And here in the Cardinals half of the first inning, Martin came up, the count went to three and two, and then he went down swinging hard beyond the strikeout route and took that long, long walk back to the bench. Jack Rothrock followed him in the batting order, banged one out into left center field for a two-base hit. He rested happily down on second as Frankie first came to bat. A high flat is short left center. Rogel went back on the grass under it and had it in the pocket for the second out. Two out, one on, and Medwick up. Medwick foul one, high behind third. Owen went out fast on it and took that one in the net. No run, one hit, no error. And the big zero hangs in the first half of the first inning for St. Louis on the scoreboard out in right field. Jim Dean has taken his place out of the mound. He's warming up with Delancey. And Jojo White is down there swinging two big black bats as he comes into the batter's box. And here's Tom Manning. You know, there's a little picture down there that we want you to get. Dizzy Dean, you know, is in the box this afternoon. Bill Hallahan was the expected pitcher. Frankie Chris said before the game that, well, if Dizzy wants to go, we're going to put him in there. Perhaps he thinks that Dizzy Dean was very much instrumental in winning the pennant and he's getting the chance to pitch today. Ready to go. White is up. All one. Oh, inside. That perhaps is the reason that Dizzy Dean, with only a day's left, is in there this afternoon instead of Wild Bill Hallahan. 
Jojo White is up. Ball one. Strike ball. Ball one. And strike one. Jojo White, a left-hand hitter. Center fielder and leadoff man of the Tigers. The wind-up. One and one. Strike ball. That was a fast ball. The both over the outside corner to a left-hand hitter. And it is now strike two and ball one. The wind-up. The pitch. It's a ball new ball. Down to Frankie Stacey comes over. He has it. Throws the column. White is out at first. One tiger down in the first inning. That was a bounding ball that Frankie Fitch came over to his left. Picks it up. Mickey Cochran gets a hand. Hits him. Manager Mike Cochran. There was a lot of doubt here in Detroit last night as to whether or not manager Mike would be able to play today. He was spiked and running out of hit yesterday when Paul Dean put back against his knee. It was a bad gap, and he was in the hospital all night. But he's out here this afternoon helping the boys in this crucial World Series ball game. First inning, one out. Cock it up the pitch. That's right, Paul. Nice fast ball was right down the old alley. Cochran up with one out and nobody on. The drive off the left field with a foul. Ball curve foul and the count on Cochran is strike two. Mike Cochran is up and Gellinger will be next. Jerome Dizzy Dean. Strike two, the wind up. Coming. It's a ground ball down second. Fink comes up with it. Throws to Collins. Cochran is out. Two out. Nobody on. Gellinger coming up. Gellinger is getting a nice ground of applause. Now that Gellinger, you know, living up to his reputation of the past. Quiet fellow just in there playing his best all the time. And his best is good enough. Two out, nobody on. The pitch to Gellinger. The high fly ball out toward left field. It is curving foul with everybody after it. Nobody gets it. Ooh, Joey Hendrick was almost injured that time. He came over fast and his side bumped into the concrete barrier. And one of the boxes out there back of third base. He ran all along the gutter. But he didn't fall down and he's all right going back out to left field. Dolly Carrier was taking no chances on that ball. He had drawn the second base and was on his way to third. The pick. The drive deep into right field. That box is going over near the line, under it, and he has it. That's all for the Tigers in the first inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. No runs and yes, forward. Yes, sir, Reed, Tom Manning. No runs and yes. Two of those zeros now hang out on that right field scoreboard. St. Louis, nothing. Detroit, nothing. And we end the first inning of this important ball game. Important, yes, sir, the seventh and deciding game of the 1934 World Series. These teams battling the Detroit Tigers and the St. Louis Cardinals. Tied up with three games each. And here's what happened in the Tigers out of the first. White came up, bounded to break, and he was out first to pilot. Stockton is back, grounded one hop down the flag. He's to stop it, winged it over to first base. To Rip Silent, retiring Cochran. Right and Cochran down, and Geringer up. Geringer finally had to bang that fly out over third base and curving foul. Drove a fly out into right field, and Glass Rock took it for the third out. No run, no hit, no error. Now we have the fifth man in the Cardinal batter coming up. Coming to the plate here in the second inning, and Tom Manning to give it to you. All right, Tom. It's Rip Tom. The Cardinal first tackle, left-hand batter. Hell the marker. Right-hand submariner is in the box. The wind-up. The pitch. He swings and lets it drive out in the left center field. It's a face hit. Collins rounds first. Right has the ball. Puts it in to Rogel. It gets past Rogel. Carrying her backing up. He covers the ball. And Collins stops the first. A single. Line drive out to Jojo. Right, but he took on the bounce. Got away from Will Gerrill on the return, but Geringer was backing up. That's the second foul hit. 
Bill Delancey, the captain, was up. The pitch. Paul Owen, a fast ball was smacked into Cochran's glove. Bill Delancey pulling away from the plate, and it is ball one. First pass of the second inning. A foul back, strike. Ball one, strike one. Ball one, strike one, the set. A peek over to first, the pitch. It's a ball. Outside, and the count on Bill Delancey. Left hand hitter is two and one. Elder Masters. Having a hard time out there in the tipping rubber, trying to get that extra dirt out of the way. Now he's all set to go. Ball two and strike one. The pitch. It's a bowling ball down third. Aaron, he's carrying her. And here's that play again with Collins on first. Bill Delancey left the ground ball to move Owen. Owen. To Gellinger, Collins was out. Gellinger to Greenberg, getting the hitter to Lancey. Two out, nobody on. El Sadi up. With the first pitch coming right up here, look out for oh, oh, Somebody caught it. Well, that's the closest we come to being hit so far. Ball strike one. Something about these microphones, they should not be hit by a ball there. Strike one of the count, and the pitch. That's a base hit in the right field. Ball is exceeded by Pete Fox, returns to Rochelle at second, or Sadi stops at first, the second cardinal hit of the inning, the third of the afternoon. Leo DeRocha, the star of yesterday's ball game. Brilliant short shot yesterday, you know, Leo, has three basic balls to close the outfield. Or Sadi on first, DeRocha up the pitch, strike, call. The Rocher, back to right-handed. There's the stretch of peak at first. Coming, there he goes. The player's at second base. He is out stealing. Eric Sadi is out stealing. Cochran to Carrier. A run, two hits, and four errors in the first half of the second inning. Four. Collins, the first time, will batter up in the cards after second. That one into center field over second base for a clean single. Delancey, Joe Delancey, fancy catcher of the St. Louis Cardinals, bounded one down to Marv Owen. Owen took it, stopped over to second where Gillinger had it, swinging it down to Greenberg for a double play, play wiping up the bases, two out, and Orsatti coming to the back. Orsatti grounded one into right field for a single. He was on in Leo DeRosa, who came up yesterday, got three out of four, and was up there swinging that bat hard. And Orsatti went, started down to second, and was out on the block down there from Mickey Cochran's wing, retiring the side. No run, two hits, and no error. Now we come to the fourth batter in the Detroit Tigers lineup, as they come up for half the second. It's the Goose, Goose Goslin, stepping up to the plate now, and here's Tom Manning coming in to give it to you. All right, Tom. Dizzy Dean is on there, kicking some all that dirt around the pitching rubber. As we prepare to go into the final half of the second inning, no runs is yet. A wind-up, down from hitting. First ball is a four hopper down first base. Collins takes it, passes to Dean. He's out. Collins takes the ball, and Dean, Dizzy Dean, covers the bag, taking the ball and getting the foot out. One gone. That was a lazy, bombing ball that the Collins handled. Next hitter will be Billy Rogel, a little shortstop of Detroit Tigers. Billy is batting left hand of this afternoon against the right hand glance of Dizzy Dean. Here's the wind up. One gone, nobody on. Long one this time. Here comes. As the bombing falls down, short to is in fact. It's Tim. He's safe. That was a bombing ball that the Rosa came in fast for. Through the ball in the dirt, Collins knocks it down, and it is scored as an error for a shortstop to Rocher. Rochelle safe at first on to Rocher's error. Greenberg body, big right hand hitter. Last half of the second inning, one out, and Rochelle is on first. 
There's the stretch. And the pitch. Strike. Hell. That was a hook ball. This hit the outside corner of the plate to Hank Greenberg. Greenberg has his jaw set down there. The trap and was swinging that bat up and down. There's the stretch. And the pitch. Strike. He swings hard and misses. And now it's two and nothing. Hank Greenberg is hitting third baseman, Corvo, and his next. Rochelle is on first, one man out. Dean is pumping his left foot up and down out there on the rubber. There's the stretch now. A peak at first, and the pitch. A foul back. And the count remains right two. Help us cross out a new ball on fire, Harry Geisel. Bill Delancey up. Several yards out toward the pitcher's box. And then crosses it to Dizzy. Dizzy takes his glove off and first puts out for center field. And now he's looking in at Hank Greenberg, standing out there, rubbing the ball in his bare hands. Now he's ready to go to stretch. It's strike two, you know. A play at first. Rogel is safe. Dizzy turns, stops that ball over there with money on it to Rick Collins. Now it's stretch. The pitch. Strike three. He swung hard. Had a curveball over the outside corner. It was just above the knee and missed it for a third strike. Two men out. Both yell on first. And Herb Owens. Detroit Tigers third baseman. Right hand hitter is up. No runs as yet, you know. There's the set, the pitch. The bounding ball down to Pepper Martin. Martin comes up with it, throws to first, forcing Rochelle at second for the third out. No runs, no hit, one error, four bombs. The Ford Motor Company is sending you to broadcast the World Series game. The National Broadcasting Company presents a special news bulletin from the Front Radio Bureau. My five friends. French Foreign Minister Louis Barthou died today from bullet wounds inflicted by an assassin who also killed King Alexander I of Yugoslavia. It was first reported that Barthou's injuries were not serious. At Paris, the French cabinet has been hurriedly called into meetings to take action on the assassination of King Alexander of Yugoslavia. A grave European crisis is feared. Crown Prince Peter, 11 years old, the son of the plain king, probably will be proclaimed king within a few days. These bulletins are from the Press Radio Bureau. For further details, read your newspaper. Here we are now, going into the first half of the third inning. Out on the mound, Elvin Alter is warming up with Mickey Thompson. We have Leo DeRocher coming up there, who was at bat when Orsatti was out of second on the field. Here's Tom Manning to give you the first half of the third inning. All right, Tom. Leo DeRocher and Obi, Cardinal, shortstop. Was at bat last inning when Orsatti does erase Felix. Well, the walker, right-hander, starts to wind up on the first pitch to DeRocher. A great call. Here's the wind-up again. Ball in, a fast ball is high inside. And the count on DeRocher is one and one. Ball two. Hawker's third ball was low and 20 outside. Two and one. Ball two and strike one. Hawker walked out of the path for second base. Now he's in there again. The wind-up. Strike call. That was a third ball. Right over the heart of the plate. And now the count on DeRocher is two and two. Ball two and strike two. Has a drive out of the center field. Price going over a little bit under it. Waiting. He has it. One man out. Leo DeLocher, the Cardinal shortstop, fires to Jojo White. The hand is for Dizzy Dean. Jerome Dizzy Dean of the Cardinals batting. One out, nobody on. Coming. The ball up the back. 
Dizzy Dean let his bat slide out of his hands, and it rolls clear down past the third base cooking. Swung at that ball and fouled it off. Now the coach is swinging it back. Dizzy walked halfway down to get it. Shaking his pitching hand that time. With the bat snapped out of his hand and probably stung for a moment. Dizzy gets a big hand full of dirt, rubbing that old bat around there plenty. Much as you say, he's got a real grip on it. Boy, another foul bat, strike two. The big boy is taking a lazy swing at that ball. That time he reached over the outside corner for a bad pitch. Just swung rather leisurely at it. And the count is two and nothing. Here's the windup. Strike two on Dizzy Dean. Back one out in the left field, looks like a face hit, it is, a face hit, the team is rounding first, Dodger has the ball, team is going down, it's going to be close, it is close, he ties in, he's safe, a double, or a dizzy team. Going up at 20, close to second base, but Dodger's return to Rochelle, or it's just a little bit on the pitching box side of the bag, and dizzy team put on the other side with a nice hook slide, and he is safe getting a two-base hit. A long, close swing at that ball, just cut it right, and pumped it out to left field for two bases. Pepper Martin coming up. Last time up, Pepper struck out. There's the stretch and the pitch. He wraps one out to left, it's going to be foul. It is foul. Strike one. Only those two umpires, Bill Clem and Harry Geisel, were certainly out there in position to see that one. Harry guys are running about 15 feet down for serve. We got a good view of that line. Right one on Pepper Martin. There's the flip and the pitch. Ball one, a fast ball inside, and the count is ball one, strike one. Greenberg is playing back. So is Owen. They are not expecting it. The punt. Ball one, strike one. Ball two, a third ball is outside. Going to control it, this couple of is going to do, you know. One man out, and Jimmy Dean is on second. As a bounding ball down first, Greenberg has it. Walker covering. He's safe at first base. Walker coming over with Taylor and Papa Mark feeding by an eyelash. There's a bit of an argument going on down there at first base with going a... As his hat off, standing there, going, you know, selling in the argument. He probably said, look like we had him. The Walker and Greenberg both talking to Dean Jordan. But Pepper Martin gets it out. So it will be scored as a base hit. That puts Dizzy Dean on third base. Now we have runners on first and third. No runs on his yet. One man out. And Jack Walcott. Cargo, right fielder, left hand batter coming up. Tigers are going to play back, hoping to get a double play. Here in there, Rose Garrett, both playing deep. There's the stretch. Well, they got first and third run out. Left rock hitting. The tip. Pass is going down. The throw from the church. The tip away from. Carrying up a team, holds third base. That's a stolen base for Pepper Martin. Mike Kaplan throws, landed about 10 feet in front of Geringer. Geringer stuck up his left hand and battled the ball 15 or 20 feet away, but did you see the pitcher held fast to third base? So that is a stolen base for Pepper Martin. Third one on left rock. Becker has his glove off now and is walking around the pitcher's box momentarily. This is a tough spot in this important ball game. Runners on second and third. Here's the lined up. The pitch to left rock. Ball two of third ball. Left rock steps into that one. Gonna have to pull away fast. He's all those hooks. Geisler comes out and brushes off the plate. So we're delayed for a moment. Left rock is out of the batter's box. Now he's in there ready to go. Call it ball two. The pitch. Ball three. So ball inside. It's three and nothing. 
Frankie Creek. He'll be up next. Here comes Clarence Farrell. He left. The bases are loaded. We do not believe that that was an intentional pass to Jack Laplock. Parker was bearing down just a little bit too much. The play perhaps does not to give Laplock anything good and put a runner there may be a chance for a double carry from each base. Frankie Fitch is up. The infield is cool, playing back, hoping for a double carry. Let off the bags loaded. The pitch. A foul up and back. Strike our manager, Frankie. Here's the picture, you know, Gene is on third base. Pepper Martin on second. Jack Warcraft is on first. First half of the third inning, no run. Scored is yet. And come out. Here's the lineup. Strike one. Well, the fastball is inside. Frankie Fitch pulling away and then leaning back on his back. Count is ball one and strike one. Here's the windup, a long one, ball one, strike one. The higher foul up and back into the stand. And it's strike two. The roar that you heard, one of the fair fans popped up there. And high the World Series souvenir. Strike two and ball one. It's up there, guys will have crossed out a new ball. Hacker is out there with his glove off and is rolling on his hands. Now he's in there, ready to go. Strike two, ball one, five loaded, one out. The windup, coming. It's a ball. Outside. With the count two and one. Hacker had one to wait. He tried it through a ball, low outside, and now it's two and two. All two and strike two. Here's the windup. Two and two. It's a drive to right field. It's Kirby foul. Everybody running. Rock Rock is around the third base. That ball landed about three or four yards outside the foul line. And the count on Frankie Freak remains two two. Rock Rock is coming back to first rather slowly. He was on third. Couple Martin on second. Rock Rock on first. One out, two and two on the hitter. Walker getting the signal now. And here's that long wind up. Two and two, the pitch. There's a flash in the right field. It's a base hit. Dizzy G is coming across the plate. The ball gets away from back. Here comes Martin. Rock Rock is on his turn coming in. Rock Rock also scores. The throw is the third base. Three and nothing in favor of the Cardinals. With a bad throw to Frankie Fritz. Throw the whole line drive off the right field. Pete Fox coming over back, out of the ball, over the foul line, and scored from third. Martin scored from second. Rock Rock, who was a very fast runner, kept right on going and scored all the way standing up. It is scored as a two base hit for Frankie Fritz. It is now the St. Louis Cardinals of the National League. Three, Detroit of the American League, nothing. Mike Goffman, Merville, and Offer are standing over there about five feet inside the foul line near third base, having a bit of a conference. With a bag loaded and Frankie Fitch, you know, who has played in a good many World Series, stepped up there, and after getting a card, up two and two, he fouled off several, and then finally nailed one in the right field. The schoolboy rule, his lead will replace El Lamarca. That is not official as yet. Schoolboy Roll is coming in. It's a warming up outside there under the grandstand. And we believe in a moment it will be official that Schoolboy Roll will replace Ellen and Arthur. Mike Stockton has taken the ball from the umpire now and has walked out to the pitching rubber where Owen, Gellinger, and Greenberg. The ball walks over to the box. That is correct. Two by row. Officially, will be the relieving pitcher. That all happened in the third inning, you know. With one man gone, Dean bumped the double into left field. Papa Martin, then single. Dean out and slow bounder down first, putting Dean on third. Papa Martin stole second. Jack walked off, took a base on third, filling the bag. Frankie Fritz then doubles to right field, 
clearing the bases and making it the Cardinals three, the Tigers nothing. This is the seventh in all, seventh and final game of the World Series. The boys have battled tooth and nail during the past six days. Two games here at Maven Field, the next three over at Portsmouth Park in St. Louis, and they returned here yesterday. The Cardinals won, forcing the seventh game, and here it is. Here in the first half of the third inning. Ready to go again, and Joe Medwick, the left fielder of the Cardinals, will be first to face through their low. There is a stretch. And the pitch, a bounding ball down to Rochelle, Rochelle to Greenberg, and Medwick is out. Fritz going to third on the play. Unnecessarily, Frankie Fritz still into third base, taking no chances of being put out. Now we have two men out, and Ripper Collins, the first backer of the Cardinals, left hand battle is up. Ripper Collins. It's the first ball, takes the face into the left field. Fritz scores from third. Basil fumbles a moment, picks it up, puts it into Rochelle, and Collins drops it first. The Cardinals, four, Tigers, nothing. Bill Delancey, the Cardinals catcher, will be the next hitter. The score, the St. Louis Cardinals, four, Detroit Tigers, nothing. Four run rally by the Cardinals in this, the first half of the third inning. There's the stick. The pitch. It's a ball high inside. One or nothing. On Bill Delancey. Schoolboy Road takes the stick. A peek at first. And now the delivery. It's a ball inside. The shot breaking third ball to Bill Delancey. Skipped out of the way of, and the count is two or nothing. There's the step again. The last is batting in the count is ball two. It is, as it's passed out into right field, going, going, out into right field, a base hit, the ball turns off the barrier, Collins is rounding third, keeping tight on going, here's the player at the plate, and Collins keeps the ball and the plate. Bill Delancey, stopping his second, and it's a double. Bill Delancey, the Cardinal captain, and he took that ball, and it's coming across the letters, and he nailed it to the right field corner for two bases. It is now the St. Louis Cardinals, five, Detroit Tigers, seven. Bill Delancey is now wrapping over the Tigers, set out. Here's two for the afternoon. We please and half step will be the next picture that is not officially yet, and won't see until he reports to the umpire. Two ball steps, left hand pitcher is doing a mount as the official replacement in the box for the Tigers. The next hitter, the ninth hitter of the inning, by the way, will be Ernie Orsatti, the little center fielder. The umpire, Harry Geisel, umpire in chief behind the plate. There's Paul Sabal, and we're about ready to go. Half steps, you know, is the left hand pitcher. Delancey on second of the pitch, it's a ball. A hook ball break inside for Ernie Orsatti, and the count is one of nothing. Orsatti being the ninth hitter of this inning. Ball two, a fast ball that knocks Orsatti down. Picks himself up rather slowly, dusting himself off, and the count is ball two. There's that long, slow stretch. And the fifth, strike ball. To the count, two or nothing. Now the marker, another fast ball right down the alley for a called strike. Ball two and strike one. Now the stretch. The high foul over and back, the third one going over fast. He doesn't catch up with it. And the count is two and two on Ernie O'Sutty. Guys will roll the new ball out there to Hogsett. And then dust the plate off. Bob Owen is getting back to position towards short top of Dell with Bill Delancey returning to second base. First half of the third inning, two men out. And the count is ball two, strike two. There's the stretch. And the pitch. Ball three. 
Sticking curve horn is outside. A near wire stick with Cochran going out back to get it. Nigel takes one look at it and crosses it over to the Tiger dugout. Clean through the pitch. All fair. All steady left. Leo DeRosa, the Cardinal shortstop, coming up for the second time in this inning. He opens this inning with a long fly ball in center field for the first out. Leo DeRosa, right hand hitter is up. There's the set. There's the face hit in the right field. Delancey, rounding third base to take hold of him up. The bad to order. That was a nice throw by Fox to Kaplan. Bill Delancey had gone to third base, but the coach over there held him up. And now we have the bases loaded to us. And Dizzy Dean coming up. Here's something funny. Every one of the Cardinals has beat base at least left in this inning. Except Joe Bedlam. Dizzy Dean comes out of the... comes off the bench rather slowly. It's a pretty stiff breeze, Warren. Just a little bit chillier here this afternoon. Dean took some time getting his jersey off. Back to Lotus about two hours. Dizzy Dean is up. The pitch strikes down. Delancey is on third. Off Sonny on second. DeRosa on first. Here's the pitch. And the high bounding ball down third on is in fast. Picks it up. And is unable to make the play. It's a big hit. Delancey crosses the plate. And Dizzy Dean is safe for first. He threw the high with that ball. Stopped it to hit the edge of home plate. And bounded about 20 or 25 feet in the air. Dizzy Dean, you know, is 25. Third on came in fast and saw that there was no chance of getting Delancey at the plate and no chance of getting Dean at first for just come out of the ball. That's the second hit of the inning for Dizzy Dean. The score now the Cardinals, six, Tiger, seven. Ace is still loaded throughout, and John Steppermark, Cardinal third baseman, will be next. We delay the moment while Dizzy Dean gets that great Cardinal red sweater on. Last time up, Steppermark, single. In the first inning, he struck out. He's half step, left hand is in the box. Dizzy Dean has it, run around all ready to go. The pitch, ball on, fast ball is inside. Pepper Martin pulls away. Crowd is one or nothing. Here's the pitch. Ball two. Fast ball was over, but just a little bit low. Now the crowd on Pepper Martin is two or nothing. He's the first part of the inning. Ball three. On the low and outside. Three or nothing. Ball three. The bad motor. Here's the pitch. Ball four. He walked. That forces El Sadi across the plate. The final. Seven, the Tigers nothing. Mickey Coppel has left off to the pitching box again and is having a conference out there with Keith Halstead. He's got him on his shoulder and Halstead is slowly walking out of the box over toward the Tiger fence, which is on the third base side of Naval Field. Many of the old time baseball celebrities are here. The World Series this year, and it's really good to see them all. Outstanding among them, whoever it goes, is the one and only Dave Ruth. We're going to give you a few of these facts now because the next Tiger pitcher is not walked out as yet, and apparently now it'll be some moments before he does. Dave Ruth, you know, is sitting here in the press box. Word has gone out to the newspapers of Dave Ruth. Will not sign a contract to play ball next year, but that he will sign a contract to manage one of the clubs. 
We believe that Tommy Bridges is coming in to be the next pitcher. So many old, familiar figures, among them some of the umpires. Dick Mallon was looking at the Junior World Series this year. Also, was here to witness two of the, the fine ball games. Boy Van Graflin, formerly of the American League, also around the corner. Chris Speaker, perhaps the greatest center fielder of all time is here. Eddie Collins, there's another name that comes to it. Knapp flies away of the Indians. Formerly the Cleveland Knapp and Eddie Collins, you know. The experts will tell you that they were two great second classes. Eddie Collins is here perhaps trying to buy some outstanding ball players for Tom Rocky of the Boston Red Sox. Tommy Bridges hit that great game for the Tigers. We'll take up the pitching now for Detroit Tigers. You know, Orchard Scarlett both came in and she passed up and now Tommy Bridges. Jack Rothrock will be up. Base is loaded, two men out. Seven runs across the base for the Cardinals. Bridges starts his wind up on the pitch to Rothrock, the left hand hitter. Ball one. Back ball is inside. Two men out in the third inning. Ace is loaded to know. And here's the windup. There's a bounding ball. Scalia comes up with a practice to Rochelle. Martin flies, but he is out. That ball on the Cardinals in the first half of the third inning. Forward well, where have you been? Come in. Come in. I've been right here watching this first half, the third inning of this World Series ball game between the Cardinals and the Dragons. This broadcast comes to you with a compliment of the Ford Motor Company and the Ford Dealers of America, and comes direct from Nathan Field, Detroit. Here is the story of the disastrous first half of the third inning. For the Tigers, the Tigers back, the Rooster up, a long fly to right field, right and left center field. Dean is back, a fly to left field, set to a double by slide into second. Martin came up, beat out a hit to Greenberg, to play Greenberg to Arthur, and he was straight on a very close decision. Rock Rock then up, Martin went down, got away with a field of second. Rock Rock walked. Straight it back, first double to right field, scoring Dean Martin and Rock Rock. Nedwick came up and Lowe was first after. Nedwick was out, broke out to Greenberg, first going to third. Collins is back, single to left, scoring first. Delancey doubled to the barrier, scoring Collins. Valsari was up and he walked. The Rock is single, sending into Lancey. All started going to second. Dean at bat, down to the third. Horn couldn't make a play. The Lancey scored. Martin up. Walk sending our body across. Rock Rock was finally out. When Bridges replaced Rowe, replaced Hodgett. On a bounder, down to second. All right, come in, Tom Manning. Here we go into the last half of the third. Pete Fox is the hitter, right hand corner. The pitch. It's the ball. The fast ball is low outside. This is the first time up this afternoon for Pete Fox. Here's the pitch. Strike. Call. Ball one and strike one. Ball one, strike one. Dizzy Dean, you know, has had a long rest. Here's the pitch. A fire up and back. Strike two. Fox is up and Tommy Bridges on deck. Dizzy Dean has his glove off and breaking that ball. Deep Fox, the right field of the Tigers, and the count is strike two and ball run. The wind up. And the pitch. Has a drive out in the center field, Lord Scotty moving on a little bit. He's under it. He takes it. Deep Fox nailed that fast ball and drove it on the line out to Ernie Lord Scotty, the Cardinal center fielder. One gone. In the five and a half of the third inning. Tommy Bridges coming up to the plate. Tommy walking up there rather slowly. And he steps into the batter's box. Dean getting the signal from Bill Delancey. The wind up and the first six. Strike. Tommy Bridges takes the cut up that one and misses. As a ground ball to Chris, Chris knocks the ball down, picks it up close to Collins, and Bridges is out. That was a hot smash 
The third ball to me, off Blackie first, Chicago second baseman. The goal is four, five feet away. He pounced on it, flipped it over to Collins, and Bridges is out. The Tigers have batted around. And White coming up for the second time. Jojo White, the Tiger center fielder. The first pitch. Foul up and back at third base, strike one. The Tigers have not made a hit off team as yet to know. Strike. Foul. Jojo White stuck out his back that time as if to stop. Papa Martin came in fast and again, as he did the other day, Delancey whipped that ball right down at it. Maybe that's a match, I don't know. Strike two. White to know, back to left handed. Two men out. No doubt around. The pitch. As the drive out of the center field, running off Scotty going over in the left center right of it, and he takes it. That ball for the Tigers in the third, no run, no hit, no error. It's 7 0. Favoring the St. Louis Cardinals in this ball game, which is coming to you from Maven Field, Detroit. <laughs> This is WMHQ, the Chicago Daily News Station. Ready for the first half of the fourth inning. So you know the Cardinals set and the Cardinals jumping. And Frankie Fritz, the Cardinal manager, will be first up in the final half of the fourth. Tom Bridges, you know, with a right-hander, is in the box for the first pass. Get the signal, now the lineup, and we're ready to go. First hitting. All run. Right. That was a fast ball right at the feet of Frankie Fritz. Frankie jumped out of the way and then fell on the ground. Now he's getting up. All run. Right. The count. There's the wind up of Tommy Briggs. A bottoming ball down to Carrier. He comes up with it cleanly. Crosses to Greenberg. Fritz is out of first. One man out of the fourth inning. Joe Medley. The left fielder. The only man on the Cardinal lineup who has not made a hit as yet. He made 20 during the season and he's made 20 in the series so far. Up twice with no hit. Strike. Takes a terrific cut and misses. There's the wind up again. Six. Has a smash to the right field. Fox going back, coming over under it. He takes it. Two men out. Nobody out. And Ripper Collins. The Cardinals. Two stars on Fox. But those three out. Took off his glove and started in for the first. Here's the first pick to Collins. As it's passed out in the right field, it's a base hit. Big Fox coming in. Picks the ball up, returns it to Geringer at second. And Collins has his third hit of the afternoon. Three singles. Bill Delancey, the Cardinal catcher, will be next. He has a double out of two times at bat. Bill Delancey, back to left hand. There's the pitch. Hit the ball on that side. Just Tommy Bridges to know it's not very big, weighing around 155, 160 pounds. There's the pitch. A bounding ball slowly down to Gellinger. Gellinger passes to Rochelle. Bottom. Here is out that second. Delancey going one down to Gellinger. He passes it over to Rochelle. Stop her in second base. Crossing Dallas at second down the act. No run, one hit, and no error. Here comes Mr. Tapper now, accompanied by the applause of the Detroit fans here in the stand as he comes out here in the Badgers out of the fourth inning. Come in, John Manning. So far, the Cardinals have made 11 hits off the catch up of pitchers of the Tigers. And the Tigers of the American League, Andy Burke, have not made a hit as yet. Those girls reaching base on an arrow. Mike Cotter leads off in the last half of the fourth. He winds up the pitch. Hit the foul. Foul inside. And the foul is one or nothing on Mike Cotter. 
There's the wind up again. Strike throw. There's a hook throw with a pocket all the way from. Tip the inside corner. And the count is throw one and strike one. The wind up and the pitch. The high fly ball. Here's second base. Frankie Creek is under it. Creek has it. One man out in the side of the half of the fourth inning. Charlie Gellinger coming up. Some of the boys call him Gellinger. Some of them call him Gellinger. Charlie himself calls him Gellinger. You and I have put it up down to shoot everybody. That's right. He's put it up to shoot everybody. Gellinger gets a nice hand and all ready to go. He winds up in the first pitch to Gellinger. Strike throw. Busy B. It's still firing down out there in spite of the fact that he has a 7-1 lead. Taking no chances. The pitch. It's a big hit. It's the first hit of the afternoon to right field. Got black back. Takes the ball up, shoots it in to the other leg, to the second, and Gellinger stops the first. The first Kaiser hit of the afternoon. Two salesmen coming up. The Tiger fans have not given up as yet. Over there, rooting for a block of base hits as yet. The Jets. Ball on. The fast ball over the plate is just a little bit too high. All staff in the fourth inning. One out. Going on first. Fouls are hitting. All run. The fly ball. Short left field. The race is going back. Medwick coming in. Medwick. Hunter, and he has it in short left field. Two out, going along first. Billy Rochelle. He's a short shortstop. He's hitting left handed this afternoon. We're back next. Billy Rochelle. He makes the step and the pitch. It's too high, going around. Dean is out of the box, looking in there, getting a signal. Now he throws the ball. He's got the five and five on the first. He's picked it up, passes to the Rocher. And the Rocher throws the ball over the first. He's still the fans, and it was a double play, which was not necessary, of course. No runs, one hit, and no errors. Four. Two outs, two runs, two errors. 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 And Captain Bach went up towering Lyron with first foot on the grass, just the edge of the grass, back in second base. Geringer, Donna Geringer then came up, going on into right field for a single in the first hit off team for the afternoon. Dawson then it back, a fly to Medwick, Medwick coming in fast in the short left, and took it for the out. Look down, at that, fourth Geringer, second, driving one down the stage, Chris Dawson to the road to the the track. No run, one hit, no errors. And the score is seven to nothing, favorable to the North Cycles, seven runs made in the third inning. Eleven hits. The Cardinals have to get it so far to one hit for the strike back. We go again to the fifth inning now with Ernie O'Fatty. California boy coming up there, rubbing the, something out of his eyes. He steps up to the batter's box. After it's off the round, they just walked up to the mound, and here's Tom Manning to give it to you. Right on forward, ready for the first half of the fifth. Only on Saturday, the center field of the car, left hand batter, who has a single on the face on, balls is up. The pitch, straight turn. Tommy Bridges, set a fast forward, turn miles right down the alley. Coming. The highest fire ball. Out to short left field, Garfield coming in, waiting for it, and he has it. One down. Captain Leo DeRosa is coming up. Yesterday afternoon, you know, Leo had three hits. He's just about the happiest kid in the East United States. I'll tell you that. He admits himself he's not much of a batter, but he was all right yesterday. The first six, six pounds. We will have one hit out of two trips to the plate this afternoon. Fifth inning, one out, nobody on. The wind up. There's a high fly ball to left field. Garfield coming over about five yards under the plate. He has it. Two out, nobody on. 
Dizzy Dean will do the next batter. Dizzy Dean sitting on the bench waiting for his turn at bat. Ice coming up there working very slowly. Dizzy's getting an eye pass from the fans here at Detroit. He steps up to the plate. People flying around down there in his good shot. Time is required for a moment as Billy Rochelle gets his foot on it. Now the fans are having some fun, gets away from him. Finally, he catches up with it and they're ready to go. First time of the fifth inning, the five, seven, five of nothing, two out, nobody on. Dean is up. And the pitch. Great. And the roar of the crowd comes up as he swings all the way around, pivoting, and then falls to the ground. Here's the pitch again. Again, Dizzy Dean swings from way back. I think he's trying to please the crowd. Now he doesn't care. They're getting a kick out of it. Two strikes of hitters. All the way from the west coast and east coast of the them for the strikeout ending the final half of the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, and no errors. And here's what happened. Only your starting first up. Wyatt out to drive for Leo DeRocher, also tried to drive for him. Dizzy Dean then came up and took three long swings rather leisurely. And then walked over to the Cardinal dugout and got a drink of water, and now he's walking slowly out to the pitching rubber to take up his pitching duty against the Tigers in the last half of the fifth inning. So far, the Cardinals have scored seven runs. They have made 11 hits. They've been the recipient of three bases on ball. He's got up seven runs, 11 hits, three bases on ball. While the Tigers, on the other hand, have last out four times. They have made one hit. That's by Charlie Gallagher in the fourth inning. Billy Rochelle with the base in the second inning on the other races out. With one of the tiger half of the fifth inning, Hank Greenberg will be first up. And Ford Bowen will describe the play for you. So he's in there, here's the pick. A ball going outside to take Hank Greenberg, who backs right. The Lancy takes some glasses out to Dinsteen, who's off it on the mound, standing just at the edge of the saddle, which cuts across the pitcher's mound. He goes into his wind up, shoots it in. A ball, right to the same position, still outside to the right-handed batter. Ball two. Greenberg swings it back, back and forth, moving it around, down 30 feet, and Dean goes in his line of the pitch. He swings for a strike. Dean goes in his line of the pitch. 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 Dean goes he smacks one out of the first hit into right center. Comes on down the first for Green. And got Rob Rock, who kicks it into first. And Big Hank is down on the first base here. Single to reset it. Marvin Owen. Marvin Owen of San Jose, California. Two up there for batters. Last note. The Lancy has walked out and handed the ball to Dennis Dean. A new one. And he's rubbing off, breaking the cover against the city. Rubs his foot across and runs the rubber. He's in top of the door there and walks over. Just he's going into it, glances around Greenberg, here's the pick. A ball outside to Marvorn, who's batting right. Another collegiate boy, Marvorn. He's down there batting now with one arm. Nobody out, here's the pick. He taps one high, out into right center. Rob Rob goes back under it and has it in the net. And Greenberg would drop him two thirds away down the second case and pass over to first. One on, one out, and he pops you up. He pops a Hoosier lab. Evansville, Indiana. So far, Missouri, he has big hit to his credit. Just his staff as he stepped up there, he bats right, facing Dizzy Dean. Here you turn to his back to Greenberg. As he comes up, sets his on the rubber, then glances over his shoulder. Greenberg takes a little lead in the pitch. A foul back into the screen. Foul, strike one. They started up rhythmic tapping in the stands, listen. Dean gets the signal, steps up on the mound, 
goes into his set, lines it over, and here's the set. That's winning sight blue. Looking it cleanly. A fooler on what Dean put across the event. The Lancy shaft is down there, gave the signal. The wind up in the set. Here it is. A bounding foul over into the Tigers dugout. Going in there where one of the boys doing a thing to close it down into the northern shelters of the dugout. Yo Pete Fox up there, strike two on him. Dean with his back to Greenberg, glancing at it over his shoulder as it comes up, goes into his mind up in the stretch, and again, another glance, here it is. A ball, 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 ball there by Harry Guy, who's down there. And it's one ball in strike two. Harry Guy was falling in behind the play today. Ball one in strike two. And Greenberg on first. Wow, well, here's the pick. Coming to bat. 
Central Americans will be first up. The right hand batter, Cliff Thomas Bridges, and Mickey Cochran beside the battery. Third. And the Cardinals leading seven, and having a couple marks and take his face in the batter's box down there. Down to Lovers, up to the back of the box. Bridges goes to his line up. Here it is. A strike, a looper coming over there. Low ball, or a call strike. Strike one. Double pulls his cap as Bridges. Now he's stepped up onto the mound. Bridges is lined up. Here it is. He's got one in the short left. Ball base hit. Round first. Going on down in the second drive. He makes the throw into the hotel. He slides in and is called safe by Brick Owen. Rogel taking the draw from Gosling, who fielded it out there. Good, and the official scores as a single and an error. The error on the goal is a pitch to the next batter. That drop clock is up there, and it's a ball. Wide and outside for that kind of batter. Double marking down on second. Bridges goes to his set. Here's the pitch. He starts to fly out into the left center. Godwin over, under it, and has it for the off. Beppery Martin starts to go down to Godwin, wins it in to Marborn, and Martin is held on set. One out, one on, and Frank Strait drew up at the plate. He comes up pulling at his trousers, pulling at the peak of his cap and adjusting it. They all seem to want them to get themselves perfectly comfortable before they step into the batter's spot. Frank, he always takes his up a little toe, holds his left foot and his left up there. Swings his back back and forth and got him a couple of times, up and down. And throws his back on his shoulder. Here's the look around Martin, here's the pick. A drive out into left center. Where the Rajiv to West comes in, has it, swings it in the second. And Martin is again forced to hold the base by the Kistroia. Cross around for the moment. New Greenberg, and he wings it over to Bridges. Joe Medwick, bottle straight. He's in there now, facing batting right. Martin down on second. Has no hit. He says it's happening. Here he is. A foul strike on Joe Medwick. First ball delivered to him. The only man in the Cardinal lineup. Not a hit. He says it's happening. Here's a pitch. He swings hard and drives one high. Out into his feet. Right center, bounds off the barrier. He starts escaping around second. The runner is in. He goes on down the third to relay, and he's safe at third base. Ralph Roy, as he runs in the third base, covering the bar. Joe Medwick, he just got down a hard one down there, and there's some little fuzzy between the boys, between Mark Owen and Joe Medwick. He came in hard in that bag, pushing the third base. between the boys. There's going to be a little hard duty down there for the moment. Got a discussion down there on third base as to who did what to who. There's a bad the bag is actually blocked, and he hit him there unintentionally hard, running into it with his foot, and he played in there. Look at it, that's the relay in from three spots. Well, he's seen just back to that down there without any misunderstanding. They thought he was out on the back, that is the boys. Everybody's friendly again. One got the other was just doing too many bad things to him, and it looks to be a negative that they would have some really stifled down there on third base. But they seem to have it up, and Medwick, Medwick was standing on the base, Medwick broke it up, tried it. Father and shoulder. Now we have Rick Collins down here. He is waiting for all the stuff to get over out there at third base. A run in, two out, and Medwick on third. Rick Collins is back. Rick is back in the back now. That's the thing on the right and Low bar, cutting the inside corner, looping out over there. Right one, is the count on him. Here's the wind up. 
the pitch. And the forces in the late to play dropping the way to get his head out of the way that ball. Ball one and strike one is the count. Lined up. Here's the pitch. He's got some hard over second base out in front of you in the face here. A single swing. He's got some hard over second base. Ben Price has trouble handling the ball out there. Single. And an error. Here's your third goal scorer, down on that one. The error on center fielder Jojo White. So Rip Collins is down on second. Two out, two runs in. And Bill Delancey coming up, tapping the plate there. The score is now 9 to nothing. Here's the St. Louis Cardinals. Here's the pitch. He swings out, missing it clearly for strike one. Delancey steps clear out the batter's back on that. Right he's off his hands in the dirt. The boy comes back up. While Pitch is waiting for him, he steps out of the left the mound. Dusted his hand on the Rosenberg again. Got of the grandstand now steps is almost at the second base. Stepping through short. And curving on around over first. Bridges looks around the drift island. Here's the pitch. He's got the high towering high power back and forth. Bob Boone goes back fast. But it's got where he can't do a thing with it into the boxes above third and back of there. So Marv Owen drops back in. Up the glass in the sand. He's bound away from those who try to get it. Lancy again. Back in the batter's back. Strike two is the count on him. Two runs in this inning. Here's the pitch. He swings hard at it again. He got the third strike at his last time to Greenberg. Well, the app is trying the strike. Come in, ground man. Two runs. Three hits. And two hours. Pepper Martin was first up. And he singles the left field. He went to second. Went to the left. Went to the ball. Getting an hour. That's left left. Why is it awesome? Switch. Tries to fight. Joe Ludwig then got a hold of him and drove it against the barrier in right center field, throwing Pepper Martin. And Joe Ludwig went into third base. He and Marv Allen tangled up over there. With Ludwig sliding, he knocked Marv Allen down. The boys got up. They scored off. But before any damage could be done, the players stepped between them and the fight was over. Ludwig is going out to left field now. They're throwing apples and bananas. Then Ludwig triples, throwing Martin, and then the appearance of third base. Collins then singles the center field. It was Collins' fourth hit of the afternoon. It sent Ludwig across the plate, making it three to nothing. Then Ludwig triples, throwing Martin, and then the appearance of third base. Collins then singles the center field. It was Collins' fourth hit of the afternoon. It sent Ludwig across the plate, making it the cardinal of the National League time before the American League nothing. Collins six seconds, and White goes to White, the center field of Humble. The Lancers then struck out. And here's the picture in left field again. The ground keepers are doing a great job of putting the left field Thank you. 
fourth place will be resumed at Maven Field here in Detroit. The umpires, the now congregated down there, is just in front of the shortstop position. Nigel and the of the American League, Dean Jordan and Bill Trump of the National League. They're having some sort of a conference down there, while all of the Cardinals are in a flat to the huddle right at the shortstop position. And we're going to turn the microphone over to Paul Todd, who thinks he sees something different now. Paul. The conference of umpires is going on down there now, Tom. It's different from the several conferences which have gone on before. We've had several down here while this action going was going on. And now the four of them who in time to come out have stepped over to speak to manage the Frankie Fray. What their decision has been after this reception given to Joe Medwick out there in left field will be announced in just a moment. The players are being back in their position. He is walking back up to the mound. One of the boys carrying his red, his cardinal red jersey out. Medwick has walked out there. He certainly seems to be able to take it. He stood there facing the fans, taking all the booze and the jeers which they offered him. Now he's walked out there amid that. And more of the food is starting to come down. Lemon, oranges are starting to slice down around Joe Medwick again. The looters, the white looters are in the stands. The people down in left field are showing their displeasure with the happening at third base. Which, of course, no one can tell just exactly what it was. Both the boys battered each other as they left. And Medwick walking out there in the field is getting the same blood reception every time. And the groundskeepers are out again. What do you see over there, Tom Manning? Just at the moment, here's something going to happen. We're going to follow this play all the way out for you. Manager, manager Mickey Coughlin of the Detroit Tigers, a great favorite in Detroit, has been asked by Frankie Quick to go to left field to see what can be done about it. Mickey Coughlin, uh, being a big sport, is walking out to left field with his bat in his hand and is now holding up his hand, asking the breach of right to refrain from throwing anything else out on the field. Mickey Coughlin, however, doesn't go all the way out to left field. He's stopped out right there at the moment and is talking to Clem and Rick Owen. And now he's coming back towards the plate. And once again, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, about a dozen of the ground keepers are out there. And for the came out of the fence, he stands over there, just barely missed one of the, the ground keepers out there, who has a big a tail, trying to pick up the fruit and the battles and so forth. Mickey Cochran has walked in now and is standing right at the field. And he's walking back toward the plate again for the moment. And has called uh, Joe Medwick over to his spot. Joe Medwick is coming in from left field. All of the Cardinals players are running in, all going over to Landis' spot, but they are stopped at the line by the, uh, the umpire. Joe Medwick now is over uh, with his, his top off, gentlemanly standing there talking to the commissioner of baseball. The photographers are standing out there on the field, they've climbed over the barrier, and they are taking pictures of Joe Medwick and Frankie Frick as they stand there talking to the commissioner of baseball, uh, Judge Kenneshaw Fountain Landis, who's occupying a box along the first baseline. Mickey Cochran has also walked over and is in the conference now. Uh, Greenberg has also come over. Uh, the umpires are, are walking over now. Let's see. Uh, Clem uh, has dropped over to the commissioner's box, and the commissioner is there doing all of the talking at the moment with Medwick. Chris Cochran and Greenberg all standing there with their arms around and a close huddle so that no one except the umpires and the players will be able to hear what uh, the commissioner has to say. He's waving his hand up in the air now like an umpire would say to get out of the park or something. The Frankie Fish, Frankie Fish is saying something back to him. Uh, he's pulling up his trousers as he walks away. I believe that it's not official as yet that Kenwick is out of the game. Right? Ladies and gentlemen, they do not say that Commissioner Landers has put him out because that is not official. But after the conference, at the box, at Commissioner Kennesaw Mountain Landers, Joe Medwick walked to the Cardinal's bench. We think 
That's the commissioner has ordered Frankie Prince to replace Cedric in left field. That is at least our observation from our broadcasting position. And now for the benefit of our thousands of friends, perhaps, who would like to catch up those who are getting, just getting home from work. We want to tell you that in the first half of the sixth inning here, the score, the St. Louis Cardinals of the Master League time, Detroit Tigers, nothing. It was in the sixth inning that Joe Ludwig drove the ball into deep right center field. The ball turned off the barrier out there, and it was a close play at third base. Joe Ludwig left his feet and slid into third. He and Merv Allen, the Tiger third baseman, both fell to the ground. They got up and squared off. The player stepped between them, and when Joe Ludwig went out to play, must be for the Cardinals, he beat the right through everything that they had. Many of them were carrying lunches, through oranges, apples, bananas, and sandwiches of every description and of every make out on the field, including a lot of pop bottles. The field was cleared off several times, but Senator John Martin Landers, after a conference, has ordered Joe Medrick out of the lineup and kicked forth will play left field. You know, Dizzy Dean will be allowed to take a few moments now to warm up after this long delay. And the first Tiger hitter in the sixth inning will be manager Mickey Cochran. And here is Ford Bond to tell you about the Tiger half of the sixth. The score, St. Louis 9, Detroit nothing. Ford, Tom, that's the first time that Judge Land has ever participated in a division in a game since his attention to the half league of baseball. Here's the pitch. A strike called on Mickey Cochran. Judge Landis making the decision down here, standing up in his box with the managers before him and the two players who were concerned in the disruption at third base. Making the decision, sending Mebrick out and pull us in. Here's the next pitch. He tracks the fly out into right field. And Brofrock going back to the line makes a nice catch of it, making it one out. You know, we're in the last half of the sixth inning. Mickey Gotson, the first man up for the Tigers as they trail nine to nothing, coming up in the half of the sixth. Sally Geringer is next to bat. Pull it. Fuller is the new left fielder for the St. Louis Cardinals. Dizzy Dean had a long time and tried to warm up several times. Then they tried to resume play, drop his sweater, put it back on when the boot started flying off in the left field again. Three or four times that happened. Each time he had to retire to put on his sweater and try to keep his arm warm. Then he came back, warmed up again. Geringer's in there now as Mickey Dotson dropped on over to the dugout. One out. Nobody on. Here's the injured batter. Here's the pitch. A ball strike. Cutting in there. Curving in and cutting the outside corner. Strike one on Charlie Geringer. He his bat back on his shoulder. Puts it up again. Here's the wind up. The pitch. A bounder down the Georgia Rosa takes it. Just it over to first and he's out. A beautiful pickup by Leo De Rosa. And the crowd is applauding him here. He made a beautiful pickup of a bounder coming in fast on it, shooting over Rip Collins for the second half retiring Charlie Geringer. Zeus Goslin, big old Zeus from Salem, New Jersey, comes in there and now taps the rubber, pulls his cap, and swings his bat a couple of times. And right the full length of it after getting his dirt on his hand. Here's the wind up and shoot in. He's got the fly. It's coming over here. Just the line. Rip Collins is back under. Cross the line and has it in the net for the third out. All right, Tom Manning, come right in. No one, no hits, Grant, no errors. Mickey Cochran first up, slides to Walcott. Geringer is out to Rose at the phone. And that would have been short shot of the Cardinals. Came in and drew a big hand from the Tiger Rudy there to that slow play. It is a slow boundary. Came in fast, scooped the ball up, and hooked it underhand over the first just ahead of Geringer. Two thousand, then fouled out to first base from Tom. No one. No hit and no error. The empty two is six innings of this seventh game of the World Series. St. Louis Cardinals have scored seven runs in the third inning and two in the sixth. The score at the end of six innings, St. Louis nine, two throws nothing. Tigers started off there this afternoon and Roll, Offset, and Bridges came in as replacements in the third inning. Bridges is still in the box. A little right-hand curveball artist who has pitched that brilliant ball throughout the American League campaign. The boy who pitched that grand game against the Cardinals the other day. He is in there this afternoon, and Ernie Orsatti will lead off for the Cards in the seventh. Four bombs. Ernie Orsatti has stepped up there to the batter's box now. Harry Geisel is up at the plate. 
question from over here comes Bill Clam over to get a piece of paper. Yes, that was what was wrong here, delaying play as we go into the seventh inning. Bill Clam had trotted over, and he's down here talking to one of the coaches back here on the line who's raced back into the dugout. Now Bridge is still warming up with Mickey Cochran as our Saturday has stepped away from the plate. Bill Clem is walking slowly across the diamond. He's umpiring at third today. Tommy Bridges, whom Tom Manning was just speaking about, pitching grand ball since the third inning, pitching ninth ball. He did a grand job on Sunday. Joe Medwick, Joe Medwick has been taken off the bench and is retiring to the clubhouse. The old DeRocher, that's him on the back, that's him on the top, and we have six Members of the Detroit Constabulary escorting Joe Medwick around there on the stand. Definitely fearing that the ire of the fans here in Detroit would lead them to some rash act against Joe Medwick. Yes, we have, have another regiment joining them over and two of them meeting the Tiger dugout with one of the policemen motioning to the fans to sit down as they walk over there, go down through the Tiger dugout and back under the stand. Joe disappearing under there as the police accompany him. Now in the cross out, he's in there. Bridges is facing him. Here's the wind up and the pitch. A high foul into the fast box back to third base. Was strike one. He steps back into the batter's box. Bridges is dropping the ball into his glove. As he looks down to make it for the signal to wind up. Here's it across the plate, but it's high. Inside, batting left handed batter away for a ball. Ball one and strike one. Here's the wind up. He cracks a high one out into center field. White is under it, maneuvering around and has it for the out. Ernest Arzati retires, and Leo DeRocher comes up next. DeRocher, the captain, and snappy shortstop, one of the most graceful shortstops and probably the finest short ever witnessed in the sport of baseball. Comes up there now, back right, strikes the rubber, faces Tommy Bridges who's blowing on his hand down there as he gets the signal, then goes into his windup. Here's the pitch. He cracks one hard out into deep right center. He's rounding first. White is chasing the ball. It bounds off the barrier. He goes on down to second, round second, going on down to third. The relay is in, in into Geringer taking it, and he's on third base. A three bagger for Leo DeRosa. One out. And Leo DeRocher on third. As Mike Gonzalez talks to him down there, he takes off his cap, and they're applauding him here in the stand. Fine looking. As they're applauding Dizzy Dean as he comes up there to crack the play for the rubble of his bat. Bat on third, one out. Here's the wind up. Here's the pitch. A foul back into the screen, back of home plate. New ball goes into play, and Tommy Bridges starts breaking the cover and dirtying it up to his satisfaction. He comes up there, throws the rubber again. Bat on Dean's shoulder. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. A bounder down to third. Marvel and holds him at third, then throws Dean out at first. Owen holds the roaster on third, then makes the foot out, going over to Big Hank Greenberg. Two out. Leo DeRocher on third base, and Capri Martin. Little old Pepper down here, wiping his hands in the dirt behind the plate before he comes up and just his belt, goes to the peak of his cap and steps into the batter's box. That's the old rubber plate down here as Bridges goes into his windup. Here's the pitch. A strike call. He needs to just slip that outside corner to the right-handed batter. Stretch. And then a windup. And the pitch. Attempts to bunt and it's a strike. Strike two. Come by Harry Geisel, holds up his hand, showing the count. Strike two on the batter. Mickey gets up, that's giving the signal, here's the wind up. A grounder, down to Charlie Geringer, second, who drops it for the moment, and the runner is Davis first on the error, scoring Leo DeRocher with the tenth run of the ball game. Ten to nothing, favor the St. Louis Cardinals. Error on Charlie Guerin. Jack Luprock follows Martin in the batting order of the Cardinals. He steps up there now batting left. 
With Pepper Martin on first. A run in. Two out. Here's the pitch. A ball. High and outside to the left-handed batter. Ball one is the count. Two out. And Pepper Martin on first. And a run in. Ten to nothing now. Favor St. Louis. A foul work first. But Pepper is back there. He's put up against the bag. Falling around trying to keep his balance. Before Hank Greenberg lets loose that ball. Throwing it back to Bridges. Then again, he takes the lead off first. Standing around down here is the pitch. He goes down. Mickey fags it down, and it's piled down there to second hand. He's David Rolls just off the bag. Rogel goes over and takes it. They're scoring it as a stolen base. The runner coming in hard at the same time as the ball. The ball rolling with it. Scoring that as a stolen base for Pepper Martin. Jack Ross Rock. Down here at bat, we just set this back up on the mound. Glances around a second and shoots the pitch in. He drives one high out into deep left center. Goslin chasing and goes over his head. Martin coming on in. Rothrock Rock is rounding second. Goslin makes a throw in. And it's a two-base hit for Jack Rothrock. Scoring the 11th run of the ball game. 11 to nothing in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals. Greenberg takes the toss from Rogel, who got the throw in from Goslin. Rob Rock now on second, and Frank Frazier at back. Here's the pitch. He backs hard at the first, and Marvon goes back under to foul. Way back up there, goes back on it fast, but doesn't quite catch up with it, and it drops far along the strike. Strike one. Frankie steps out of the box. Wipes his hands with dirt, rubs him on his trousers, runs one hand the length of his bat before he comes back up there to face Tommy Bridges, who has the signal now from Mickey Cox to the face and drop. Throwing the rubber, where he was set, glances around, here's the pitch. He cracks one high, out into right field. The Pete Fox is getting under it and has it for the off, retiring the side. Come in, Tom Manning. In the cardinal heart of the seventh, Tony Orzotti was first up and tried to wait. Leo DeLoche, then triple. Dizzy Dean bounded out all to Greenberg. Pepper Martin hit a, a ground ball to Gallagher. Gallagher fumbled the ball, getting an error, and DeLoche scored. Jack Rothrock at that. Pepper Martin stole second. Rothrock then got a hold of one and drove it against the barrier and deep left center field for two bases. Sending Martin across the plate. First, slides the clock. Two runs, two hits, and one error. As we win the last half of the seventh inning, so the St. Louis Cardinals 11, Detroit Tigers 7. All is up for that old seventh inning stretch. Tigers coming to bat, and Billy Rose Gell. Tigers shortstop, left hand header. The hitter will be first up. Dizzy Dean, you know, and Bill Delancey form the Cardinal Battle. Bill Rogel has picked up Bill Delancey's mask and Bill puts the ball out for second and takes his mask and is ready to go. The Tiger half of the seventh inning. Fourth ball. Bill Rogel starts up from Springfield, Illinois. Batting now for the Tigers as we go into their half of the seventh. Dean is down on the mound getting the signal from Bill Delancey. He goes into his windup and here's the pitch. He swings out of it, fouls it, hits the foul, goes down back at home plate. Bill Delancey. I thought the ball had gone up into the air for the moment. Started tugging his pass before he realized the ball was down on the ground. Larry guys have stepped out and dust up the plate. Bill Rogel kicks some dirt out of his heels. Stepped up there again, pulls at the peak of his cap. Faces Dizzy Dean, who's out there on the mound with his characteristic stance. Before he goes into his windup. Here it is, and the pitch. A foul popped up into the hands of Leo DeRoche. There's George. For the out. Gun guard, the first batter up, popping out to Leo DeRoche. We have Hank Greenberg, the Bronx boy of New York City, up there for the Tigers. Down here, kicking hard to dirt. He bats right, kicking hard to dirt down the batter's box. Here's the pitch. A strike ball, stepping the inside corner of the plate to big Hank Greenberg, who's batting right. Nobody on, one gone, is the wind up in the pitch. He offered hard at a slow ball, but it goes sailing over the line, foul, and it's just a long strike. Strike two. 
The roar of the crowd, thinking it was a home run. It stopped straight off that left field line. That was serving foul all the time and wheeled across there. And he's up there now with strike two on him. The Lance is wiggling to Dean. The Gordon with Wynaber to pitch. He swings hard, going down the other strikeout route. Two out. Greenberg retiring one, swinging at one with plenty of hop and plenty of break on that curve. Marvin Owen. Marvin Owen, the third Tiger batter up in the seventh inning. The score 11 nothing in favor of St. Louis. They made seven runs in the third, two in the sixth, and two in the seventh. Here's the pitch. A ball too low. Fancy toss the ball to get the team. Nice piece of fist in which catch is missed. Give it a signal. Here it comes. A ball. Ball two again. Too low to my boy. Delancey walks her out in front of the plate. Before he shoots it out to Dean again. He's standing there motionless. Then goes into his wind up and he gets the signal. Here it is. A founder down to Frank Fisher. Takes it to the edge of the grass. Shoots it over to Collins for the out. Retiring the side. Three up and three down. Come in, Tom, man. No one, no hit, no no kill. Popped up to DeRosa. Greenberg, struck out. Five on, found it out, first to Collins. The full series broadcast are brought to you through the courtesy of the Ford Motor Company. They're sent to you directly from Maven Field, Detroit. <laughs> Listening to WMAQ, the Chicago Daily News Station. The time is 2.25 and 20 seconds Central Standard Time. At the close one of the first half of the eighth inning here at Maven Field, we have a change in the Tiger pitchers. Tommy Bridges, no, who's been in the box, is taken out. And football, Marbury, that colorful figure, it was so long, was Ricky Washington Senator. In great relief, pitching, he did in his early days. He's now all the Tigers, and he comes in here as the Tigers come to bat in the eighth inning. Ted Marbury, big heavy set, right hand. Tigers come to bat, and here is Ted Bond. Marbury's in there making the cover on a new ball as Kyle Fuller, the new left fielder. He's up at bat the time, here's the pitch. A ball, forcing the right handed batter away from the plate. Ball one, here's the count on Charlie Fuller from Gerardo, Pennsylvania. Here's the wind up in the pitch. Again, a ball inside the right-handed batter. Ball two. Marbury, he comes from Sigmund, Texas. He's just come in here to relieve in the eighth inning. Here's the wind-up. He cuts a hot one down. Last short, green short in second base. He goes on out to center field for a single for Charlie Dick Bullock. He's down first now with Rip Collins. You up at the plate. And Rip takes his place there in the batter's back, cracking the rubber with his back and swinging his back forcefully back and forth as he comes up there to face the offense of Purple Marbury. One on and nobody out to score 11 nothing in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals. Here's the go into the first half of the eighth inning. Here's the wind up in the pitch. He cracks one high out into right center. Pete Fox is going over under Dan has it, and Fuller's would chase almost down to second, has to race back to first. One out, one on. Dick Fuller's on first, and Bill Delancey, the Cardinal catcher, coming up to bat. Gerringer just to go in. He tosses the ball over to Marbury, who wipes his hand off on the rotten bag. One out, one on. First half of the eighth inning, the score 11 to nothing, favor St. Louis. Lancey's down there, swinging his bat back and forth. Here's the pitch. He cracks one down. Two second. Gillinger takes it, shoots it over to first. Not about to make a play. Fullers was already down on second, and there's two gone. Lancey out Gillinger to Greenberg. Ernie Orsatti. Ernie Orsatti, whom we've told you is from Los Angeles, California, and who has received an injury in almost every game of this series but it was played sterling ball all the way through another left. I believe he's only been out of one game when Fuller replaced him out in center field when the injuries were just too painful and legs too stiff to perform. Here's the pitch. A ball. Low, almost in the dirt. Stockton picking it out of it. 
Big Polis down on second. Barbary glances around at him. Playing on the mountain. Juicy pitch in past it. High and outside. For ball two. Purple Marbury again wiping off the cover of the ball. And he steps up there to throw the rubber. Looking around hard at the Polis and the pitch. A ball, ball three. High one and inside. You are on your side of you back left. Bring this back very slowly and goops it down. Here's the pitch. And the walk. A ball too low. Our fatty is given a walk. You can see just the way he drops down the first with that right leg is still bothering. Two men on, two out, and Leo DeRocher at back. Rock, rock, on a fly and falls out of 
which retires the side in the eighth inning. We have the Detroit Tigers making no runs. There was one hit. There were no errors committed, and they had one man left to the base. Ladies and gentlemen, the broadcasts of all the World Series games this year have been sent to you by the Ford Motor Company, Mr. Henry Ford, Mr. Edsel Ford, and your local Ford dealer, producers and distributors of Ford and Lincoln cars and Ford trucks. They hope you have enjoyed these games. We're starting the first half of the night, ladies and gentlemen. First man coming to bat should be up here in just a moment for the St. Louis Cardinals. Calling for attention out there on the loudspeaker system, but right now we're watching to have Dizzy Dean come up for his turn of bat. All right, starters pitching. A was his captain. The first man at bat is Dizzy Dean. We're starting the first half of the ninth, and the score is 11 to nothing in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals. Starters swings up the pitch, the first one down to Dizzy Dean. Here's the pitch. Dizzy takes it close to the belt. Ball. What? Ball on to Dizzy. Watching for another one. Carter swings up there, winds up very easily, pitches the ball in. Dizzy hits the ball out toward left field. Goslin's over after it, takes a line drive for the out. Dean out on a line drive to Goslin for the first out in the first half of the ninth inning. Next man coming up should be Pepper Martin. Pepper Martin this afternoon has been on base every time except the first time at that when he struck out. He has walked, singled, then stayed in an error, had another single. Stolen on the base, scored three times. Watching for the ball to sit down to Pepper Martin with one down in the first half of the ninth. Sardis takes his wind up, wings up easily, balances. Here's the pitch. Pepper hits the ball right straight up in the air towards first base. It's being blown foul. Greenberg is after it and takes the ball over near the dugout for the out. Pepper Martin out on a foul to Greenberg. That puts two men down and brings to that Rock Rock, who has doubled twice this afternoon, walked once. Knocked into a force out and slide out once to left field. There are two out on the ninth then, with Rock Rock coming to bat. Here's the pitch. A ball. Inside and low to the left-handed batter. Two out, nobody on. Jack Rock Rock up. Rotter has it again. Goes in left, low, wind up, and sets the pitch. And it's a ball. Ball two. Again, low and inside. Forcing Jack Rock Rock to do a little half skip with both feet to get out of the way. That slow wind up of the general again, and the delivery. He offers that of a foul back into the screen. Two balls and strike one. Here's the count now. Has that foul back into the screen. Two and one's the count on Jack Rock Rock. Third batter. Up for the Cardinals here in the ninth. Scores 11 to nothing, favors St. Louis in the first half of the ninth inning. General Crowder, who's just come onto the mound for the Tigers, pitching to Jack Rothbach, Mickey Johnson receiving. Here's the wind up and the pitch. A bunt, he goes winging down first. Crowder to get rolled over the line. Foul. Ray Hayworth, a great catcher who caught almost half of the Tigers games this year, and his name appears in the lineup here for the first time. Here's the pitch. He swings hard, and Crowder strikes out the last batter for the Cardinals here in the ninth inning of this seventh ball game. Cardinals now start out to their position as we go into the last half of the ninth inning. The Cardinals leading 11 to nothing with Charlie Geringer. Charlie Geringer, the second baseman for the Tigers, you at bat. Bill Delancey is down there now, waiting behind home plate for Jim Dean, who just did, uh, well, it's almost a somersault going on out to the mound, just in high spirits. As he steps up there to the mound, he starts warming up with Bill Delancey. Crowder had a three up and three down in his appearance here in the last game, striking out. Jack Ross lost the last man after running the count of three and two. Here's Charlie Geringer walked out there now, swinging the bat viciously through the air. Third man in the Tiger batting order. Up first here in the last half of the ninth, trailing by 11 runs. He stands there almost motionless, then wings his bat around viciously again. Here goes into his windup. Here's the pitch. He offers at it, and it kicks the plate behind home a foul. Strike one. 
Delancey never fails to knock that masking cap off as there's anything doing behind home. He doesn't wait. Instinct tells him as soon as that ball happens around him, he hasn't got any mitts to do something. Here's the pitch. He swings at it and cracks a hit, a base hit, out into left field where Hank Fuller has it. Shoots it in. It's a base hit. A single for Charlie Gerringer. First man up, Goose Goslin. Salem, New Jersey. Comes up and cracks the dust out of his heels. Dirt as he comes up there. Pulls the biggest cap. Faces his team. Here's the wind up the pit. He cracks the bounder down to first. This ball and shoots it down to second. Throws and shoots it back. And Dean was over there for the play. Takes the throw from the Roger. So there was no problem with double play. Dave was standing about a yard off first base. From here it looks as though Dizzy thought he had his foot on the bag, but he's standing a whole or yard or four feet away from first, thinking he was taking the throw for the double play. The Rocher making the out at first, retiring Geringer on a fourth out, and then making the throw over to first, trying to get the goose. Rather amusing, the crowd all got a laugh as Dizzy looked down his foot and discovered the bag wasn't under it. So here we have Bill Rogel up. Here's the pitch. He cracks one hard. A base hit. Rolling on the ground out in the right field. Scrooge is on second. And Rogel is on first. One out. And two men on. Hank Greenberg do it fast. Goslin on second. Rogel on first. One out. And Hank Greenberg up. Hank digging himself a terrific hole down here in the batter's box on the left side of home plate. He bats right, you know. And he's taking one for his right foot. As his throws the rubber, looks around a second, wind up, here's the pitch. A strike call, sniffing the outside corner to the right-handed batter. Right one is the count, one out and two on here in the last half of the ninth inning. Badgers failing by 11 runs. Stretch as he looks around a second, here's the pitch, foul off the handle of his bat. Now, two strikes. Ball tripping off the handle of his bat and bounding over towards the Cardinal dugout. Two strikes to count on Big Hank Greenberg. Up here for his last time in this 1934 World Series with two men on and one out. And the count two strikes on him. Set, here's the pitch. A swinging strike going down for the strike out and Big Hank First baseman from New York for the Detroit Tigers takes the long, long walk over to the dugout. Delancey walks her out almost to pitchers now before he tosses the ball to Dizdeen. Two men are gone, two out, and Dizdeen is out there on the mound facing Marvin Owen. Marvin Owen, another California boy, up here with two men gone, two on, and the score 11 0 in favor of the St. Louis Tigers. Here's takes off his mound and clutched his right sleeve. Takes off his glove, walks off the mound, comes back up there again, throws the rubber, goes to his set, here's the pitch. A drive down the second which DeRozier takes, toss it to first for the final out of the 1934 World Series. Which the Cardinals, which the St. Louis Cardinals win this seventh and deciding game with 11 runs, 17 hits, one error, the Tigers no run, six hits, and three errors. A shutout for the great Dizzy team. He and his brother, the only pitchers during this 1934 World Series to have two games to their credit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we know that these players are racing off the field, and most of them got off before this crowd got out here. The crowd is racing over to the Tiger dugout, but the Tigers have all disappeared down the little hole in the far corner of their dugout, and the Cardinals, of course, raced over there and got disappeared. disappear. We wanted to describe the scene for you here, but the fans are walking very quietly across the green flag here in Nathan Field. 25 years since they've had a World Series, and they haven't won the World Championship. Their spirits are dampened, of course. We're going to pass you down to Tommy Manning, who's in the Cardinal dugout. Come in, Tom Manning. Now, now the boys are coming in. You can hear them. And the first boy that's going on the air is Captain Leo DeRozier. Leo, what did you think of it? 
Well, Mom, there's the bacon. What a great ball player. The greatest fighting bunch of ball players I've ever had the pleasure of playing with. A great manager and two great pitchers and teams and a great bunch of fellas. We are here played a great game out there, George. The field of fans, fans without number. And here is that right field of the Cardinals. The boy who passed over in the right center field. Fans without number and knocked off those hard drives. Jack Rothrock. Hello, fans. First, I want to thank the, the loyal readers of California that sent me those telegrams. And it's a great feeling. We've got a great time, and we're all just as happy as we can be. Jack, get some of the other boys too. Rip Collins, here's Rip today. He had four hits. Come on in, Rip. Well, I wanted to get one more, but I got one more. I brought the world's record. I hope my family's listening to me in Los Angeles, and I know my wife is. We can tell we're all happy as we can be, boy. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Dizzy Jean. Dizz, just take this microphone and help yourself, boy. Hello, everybody. Well, the Cardinals are the champions. I predict the sport this year started. The Cardinals would win the Mount Lick in the World Championship, and they certainly did it. And I predict it was set out for myself, and boy, I got it. Look at this. This is why before you win the day. Run the good side. I have no alibi. Not at all. And I'll say, I can't say that much for the Tigers, because they come out and alibi the empty after their great defeat, but they took just it from the Cardinals. And if I'd have lost the ball game, and they ought to take the opportunity. Well, that's mighty nice, Roger Chase. Congratulations, old fellow. You've worked hard. And it's mighty nice to have you here at the microphone. Let's get over here and get Pepper Martin. Hey, Pepper. Pepper Martin. Come here a minute. Pepper Martin is trying to get himself a shower bath, but come on over. Hello, brother. Hello, everybody. I sure am uh, glad that we brought the old pennant back to St. Louis. And it's just wonderful. I think everybody's so happy. Thanks, Here's Bill Delancey, that great young chap. You're going to hear a lot about Bill Delancey. How is it, Bill? I think it's a great series. We've got the two greatest pitchers in the world on our club. And here's another great pitcher. Come on in, check Carlton. It was not a great ball game that did the day. Oh, I want to say hello to my mother and father down in Texas. Also, my all my good friends down yard. I'm happy as I can be. Leo DeRocher, I want to give you the pleasure of presenting uh, this next ball player. Well, radio fans, I want to present to you next... Oh, wait a minute, Leo. Fill this up now. Really do a good job. Well, I'll tell you, it's very hard to say much about this young fella. He has got what you call it and everything that goes with it. He is one of the greatest young pitchers who has ever come up to the majors in the last 10 years. i like to present to you radio folks, Paul Dean, brother of Dizzy Dean, the man who won that ball game for us today. Oh, 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 oh. Hello, fans. I'm sure happy that we won the ball game in the World Series today, and I'm sure that we'll be out there by next year, and I hope we can win again. Thanks. Come on, Leo. Present, uh, present the boy that's right. the, the boy that's right. Right. I want to present the Cuban president, Mike Gonzalez. Hello, fans. I'm very happy that we talked on the wall. We fight the very much. I have the one of the best series. One fit out of four. We fight them more than anybody ever thought to vampire as everybody else. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. And here's the chick fuller. No, Buster Bryant. We're going to get the fuzzy wires first. Come on, Buster. Hello, everybody. We're all excited here and we're very happy that we won this world championship. It shows the fighting spirit. I want to say a word about Frankie Frake. He's got the fighting spirit and inspired all the players with a great spirit. And the are proud of him. And the Dean boy, also, the George Bates job, see? All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Hampers, and Mother and Dad and everybody. Goodbye. We're all excited here. Wish you all lots of luck to have to get. Oh, man, alive. I want to tell you that this is certainly something. Jack Rothrock, what do you think of it? Isn't this pleasant? Oh, this, this is, uh, I never saw anything like it. Right. Well, it's a real fight and ball club, and they're still fighting. They'll go on and fight. These kids are certainly the happiest gang. We're trying to elbow our way over here to Frankie Fish. Hundreds of photographers are here. And Don Wilson, using all of his feet, trying to get through. We're trying to get over to Frankie Fish so that Frankie can tell you how uh, it is to be the manager of a world championship team. He's sitting here now with everybody popping away. It's kind of hard to get in there, but we're going to get in to Frankie Fish just as soon as we can. Frankie, I'm in here now with one arm around him and somebody's talking to him. We're going to take... Ladies and gentlemen, the manager of the world champion St. Louis Cardinals, Frankie Fish. Hello, everybody. I'm pretty well tired out. And uh, gosh, I'm just sick of death about this thing. And the boys deserve all the credit. I don't want to down for them, but they fought and fought. They never gave up. They're a great bunch of kids. It was a wonderful victory, a great series, a hard-fought series, and the hardest one I've ever been in. 
And we played against the great ball club. They gave us a battle all down the stretch and a world of credit to Mickey Cocker and everyone on the ball club. Thank you. Thank you, Frankie Fish, and on behalf of the thousands and thousands of listeners, we want to take their part for a moment and say congratulations to you and to all of your boys. I'm going to turn this microphone over to Don Wilson for a moment so that we can get some of the other boys. Well, pandemonium is certainly broken loose here in the dressing room of the St. Louis Cardinals here after this game. We were in hopes of getting Joe Medley on here a few minutes ago, but I believe he's left the dressing room. Joe. We're trying to find Tony Orsotti. Here he is. Tony Orsotti, ladies and gentlemen. Guys, it's too, too happy to serve up a lot, but we did a great ball club, and I've never been in a ball club that's had the fighting spirit that this Cardinal outfit has. We're going to walk through here now, and we'll have some of the Detroit boys on the air for you just in a few seconds. We're going across over into the Tiger dugout, and a lot of you folks are listening in. Want to hear the Tiger players and first go walk. We have stop a lot to lose, folks, but I reckon we just had to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to present to you next two shots. We gave them all we had, folks, so now we'll give them the credit. That's fine. Mickey Coffin, the manager of the Tigers, ladies and gentlemen. We can congratulate the Sandra Cardinals and Frankie Stokes on a great career. Being just too tough for them. Well, we get beaten up, though. Billy Rochelle, Phil, ladies and gentlemen, Billy Rochelle, the shortstop of the Detroit Pipe. Well, uh, the only thing I can say, folks, is Dizzy Head and Honey. And uh, he deserves all the credit in the world. He, yeah. Well, I believe that that's just about all over in the Tiger dugout, of course. The situation here, the boys are a bit downcast, as you know. They fought the the St. Louis Cardinals of the National League, and today the full series at Raven Field is over. The boys have given their all in this great uh, traffic this year. Uh, here at Raven Field, the series finishes this afternoon, and the St. Louis Cardinals, of course, are the National League champions. This is Tom Manning speaking, and I assure you we've had a pleasure in bringing you the World Series, along with Zara McNamee, Fort Bond, and our John Wilson. John, do you have a word to say? Well, I haven't a great deal to say. I think that it's been our pleasure to hear from these very fine players, and it's been grand to see this last game in the 1934 series. This concludes the broadcast of the World Series game, sponsored by the Ford Motor Company. Mr. Henry Ford, Mr. Edsel Ford, and your local Ford dealers. The sponsors will be amply repaid if you have enjoyed these broadcasts. Today's game writes the final chapter of the 1934 baseball season. The Ford Motor Company salutes the victors, the St. Louis Cardinals, world champion for 1934, and wishes both teams good luck in the pennant race next year. And in the meantime, watch the Fords go by. During this series, it has been the pleasure of a group of NBC announcers to present these games. Jim McInerney with a three game victory. Hey, Don Wilson did that job in his competent manner. Tom Manning and myself at the final of giving you the play-by-play. This is Ford Bond signing off this game, which has come to you through the facilities of the National Broadcasting Company.